Welcome to the University of Rochester Pathology video series. This video provides an overview of cutaneous melanoma, one of the least common but most fatal skin cancers. Demographics. Fair skin Caucasians experiencing frequent sun exposure have the highest chance of developing melanoma due to their increased vulnerability to sunburns. Australia and the U.S. demonstrate the greatest incidence, while South American and African countries fall far behind. Exposure to UV rays through tanning beds and sun lamps pose similar risks. Melanoma related to excessive sun exposure as a child frequently manifests upon the back and the chest. Those later in age, especially males older than 50, are more likely to develop melanoma, which can be related to extensive sun damage stunting DNA repair. Genetic factors may also play a role, as those with affected siblings or parents are more likely to be diagnosed themselves. Genetically derived factors increasing melanoma risk include skin color and the presence of congenital disorders, including xeroderma pigmentosum. Signs and symptoms. Dysplastic nevi are atypical, larger than average moles possessing an irregular shape, some of which possess the ability to develop into melanoma. Dysplastic nevus syndrome, or familial atypical multiple mole melanoma syndrome, is an inherited condition characterized by the possession of many dysplastic nevi. Congenital melanocytic nevi are moles present at birth. Those with moles on the palms are less likely to develop melanoma than those with moles affecting the back and the buttocks. People with larger congenital nevi face a higher risk of melanoma relative to those with smaller lesions. Moles appearing during adulthood should be checked by a physician. In addition, moles should not change in color, shape, or size, nor should they display any oozing, swelling, bleeding, or varying pigment. General set of signs. PE rule is a general set of signs which help to distinguish whether visible blemishes on the skin may be malignant or benign. The letters stand for asymmetry, border, color, diameter, and evolving. Any change in these variables may be linked to malignancy. For example, ragged borders, uneven coloring, large diameter, and an asymmetrical blemish may all be signs of melanoma. While a microscopic view is needed for final diagnosis, this system is extremely useful for patients in recognizing concerning lesions. Melanoma's frequent origin in the skin makes it a highly visible malignancy. A major macroscopic change in tissue includes the appearance of an abnormal dark spot on the skin, and many dark spots can often be in clusters. Development may also take place in the eyes and the mouth, manifesting as similar dark blemishes within the sclera or inner mouth. Internal organs affected by melanoma will often display similar dark spotting ranging from small flecks to significant masses. A buckshot scatter is, a typ is typical of affected tissue. More malignant tumors may become ulcerated and secrete fluids often on the epithelial surface. Risk factors. Ultraviolet light exposure can result in the transmission of rays that damage the epithelial DNA. Sources of UV light are sunlight, sun lamps, and tanning beds. Having frequent sunburns as a child and adolescent can be associated with melanoma on the trunk, consisting of the back and the chest. Caucasians face the highest risk of melanoma development when compared to other races, such as African Americans or the Hispanics due to increased risk of sunburn. Those with parents or siblings diagnosed with melanoma also appear to have a higher risk, along with those who have had squamous cell or basal cell carcinoma. Additionally, patients with weakened immune systems have trouble fighting cancer cells and are therefore at a greater risk of development, including those with HIV or organ transplant recipients who are receiving anti-rejection drugs. Before age 50, females appear to have a greater risk of melanoma. However, after 50, males do. Those with rare inherited conditions such as xeroderma pigmentosum have a higher chance of developing melanoma. Xeroderma pigmentosum is a condition where the skin cells are unable to repair damage to their DNA. Genetics. There is an association between those who have a loss of heterozygousy of the HOGG1 gene, a gene that repairs 8 oxoquinine or DNA damage and melanoma in situ. It appears that some melanomas demonstrate mutations that affect the structure of the BRAF protein. This change results in signaling through the RAF to MAP kinase pathway, and this pathway regulates the proliferation of cells, mitosis, and gene expression. CDKN2A mutation analysis can be used for distinguishing primary melanoma from melanoma metastases. Low levels of 
MIR-183 can be associated with bad outcomes with melanoma. The overexpression of PDL1 is associated with poor progression-free survival and disease-free survival rates. Clark staging. Clark staging consists of five distinct levels to determine how far melanoma has progressed. In Clark level one, the cancer is confined to the epidermis. In level two, the cancer has invaded the papillary dermis, or the uppermost layer of the dermis. Once the cancer has invaded, filled, and expanded the papillary dermis, it is considered level three. Level four occurs when the cancer has spread to the reticular dermis. Finally, level five occurs once cancer is in the subcutaneous tissue. This slide displays melanoma in situ, referring to the earliest stage in which irregular melanocytes are confirmed to the epidermis. They have, they have not spread past the basal layer, and after passing through level two, invasion of the papillary dermis, melanoma enters its third level, as seen in this slide. Cancerous cells have progressed past the papillary dermis and into the space shared by the papillary and reticular dermis. Although not fully present in the reticular dermis, chances of metastasis also increase as the cells have a greater possibility of interacting with blood vessels. As melanoma spreads into the reticular dermis, it enters the fourth level. Irregular melanocytes are now present well into the dermal tissue. The fifth and final clock level refers to invasion of subcutaneous fat. The vertical growth phase refers to the spread of cancerous melanocytes in a downward fashion. Cells begin to breach the basal layer of the epidermis and become invasive along with increasing their chance of systemic migration by interacting with blood vessels. Histologic changes. The superficial layers of the epidermis are the most common generative sites of melanoma. Primary indicators include the spread of atypical epithelioid melanocytes in a peripheral fashion, a characteristic which also marks the beginning of the radio growth phase. In situ and microinvasive malignant melanocytes commonly display excess cytoplasm, along with visible retraction artifacts, lack of dermal invasion, and spatial development in a buckshot scatter throughout the epidermis. The basement membrane remains intact, confirming the presence of stage 1 melanoma. Such masses are operable and frequently result in, com in complete remission once excised. Cell behavior becomes invasive once melanocytes display characteristics of vertical growth, especially basal expansion into the papillary dermis. This indicates progression a phase at which melanoma is significantly more likely to spread due to increased proximity to blood vessels. Atypical melanocytes appear uniform and more ex extensive, intruding past the basement membrane and clustering throughout the dermis. Dermal clusters, appear, dermal clusters appear larger than those within the epithelial layer and include large multinucleated cells with significant cytoplasm. Treatment. Decarbazine is an alkylating agent that attaches to the alkyl group of DNA and is converted, causing the double strand of DNA to lyse, thus leading to apoptosis. Nivolumab is an antibody that inhibits PD-1 binding by the PD-1 receptor. This blocks PD-1 from regulating the activation of T cells. PD-L1 inhibitors such as nivolumab have a better therapeutic effect compared to chemotherapy. The symptoms of the treatment are lower risk than chemotherapy, including nausea, fatigue, and constipation. However, there is a higher risk of hypothyroidism, colitis, and hyperthyroidism. Adjuvant radiotherapy is using radiation through high-powered beams after the primary treatment to lessen the chance of the cancer coming back. Interleukin-2 is a protein produced by T cells that promotes the development and proliferation of other T and B cells once released. In melanoma patients, it is engineered as a form of systematic immunotherapy that increases immune targeting in response to cancerous cells. While generally reserved for healthy patients, it has had success shrinking and occasionally destroying tumors through mass white blood cell production and stimulating the release of chemical messengers from targeted cancer cells. 